Hey everybody, how are you? I am doing much better and I have a lot to get to today so I'm going to start right away and which is why I have my coffee and my favorite coffee mug. Because coffee makes everything better. <laughs> First off, <clears throat> we are three days to go until the Doctor Who 50th anniversary. I'm excited. I love the programming that has been doing nothing but taking a look back at the show's history and especially for the newer fans, this is a good um, a good guide to the history of the show to, for those who are just discovering the show and they're getting one hell of a history lesson this week and I love it. I love looking back. My favorite program so far that has been um, a look back was, uh, it aired the other day, uh, Tales from the TARDIS. Loved it. And I found it really cool that they covered as much as possible. I always love seeing the older actors um, interviewed and talk about their experiences. And I liked that they also um, gave K-9 <laughs> a good mention. And I just thought that was that was too funny and really cute. So that was good. I'm loving all the programming that is looking back. November 23rd, um, I'm going to be having one of those days where my fandom just clashes with my real world, uh, normal, boring life responsibilities. Um, I will be at work that day. Um, thank goodness I have an early shift, so right away I get home. That DVR is going on and I am watching what happened. It's going to be so hard for me to stay off my phone that day. But, you know, the bills don't pay themselves and, you know, it's just one of those things where real world, normal, boring life collides with my Whovian fandom life. So, you know, you know, I got to do the right thing and go in and just, um you know, count down until I can see the special. And thank God I have a DVR on my television, so there's that. Um, we also had the one of the prequels to the 50th, The Night of the Doctor, and this one, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. First off, well, spoilers for those who haven't seen it yet, although I can't see why anyone hasn't seen the night of the doctor yet we have we finally see the regeneration of the eighth doctor who we haven't seen on on screen since the 1996 TV movie now I I gave myself I gave myself a chance to watch the 1996 television movie and I honestly did not care for it, but, you know, it happens. It's one of those things where sometimes they get it right, sometimes they don't, but no doubt Paul McGon did, did good with how he played the Eighth Doctor, so. Back to the point, um, the Night of the Doctor, we see the Eighth Doctor finally regenerate and it is from there that we see where John Hurt's character came from and he happens to call himself the War Doctor. So this gives us an idea finally of where John Hurst's character came from, and I think this is going to be a good lead into where we're going with the 50th, but I thought that was so cool to see, um, finally put some closure to the 8th Doctor and begin heading towards the direction that we are going to be going. So that was really cool to see that. <clears throat> I would also like to cover the Doctor Who Tumblr. Tumblr is one of my favorite social media sites. Um, I love that it's like a big random just storage room of, you know, photos and videos and 
blogs that people can just post up on. I love it. Um, and I think the Doctor Who Tumblr has been doing great with, um, <clears throat> with what they've been doing. And, like, today they have up a picture of, that says three days, and you have a picture of John Pertwee's, uh, third Doctor. And so, one of their challenges that they put up was 50 days of Doctor Who's 50th. And it was one of those things where you had to post something day by day by day. Unfortunately, I started it and then just things just got in the way and I didn't finish it. So, I have here a list of some of the, of all the questions that were put up. And I thought this would be great for me to just give some of my answers to them. So, I'm going to start with that. <clears throat> Let's see. We have invent a new feature for the sonic screwdriver. Now, the answer that I put, the answer that I put was, I'm not sure if it has anything like this or could even do anything like this. I put, why does it not have, um, a sensor in it to emit an EMP pulse, an electromagnetic pulse, because that would that would be able to disable one hell of a lot of technology. Just you know, emitting that familiar pulse that wipes out any technology signal. But that was just me, and I know there were others who put an example of well, have it finally be able to work on wood. But I thought there was a really cool question, and I wonder what 12's sonic screwdriver is going to look like. Because we have 11, we have 10, and then, of course, Rivers, which I honestly wonder when we're going to see River get her screwdriver. But we'll see when that happens. Another question was, if you could go anywhere in time and space as a doctor, where would it be? I've had this question, I've had the answer to this question for a while. <clears throat> for me, my answer would be um, going back to the early days of NASA, especially when the Mercury 7 were being trained. And I would just love to see what those guys were, were thinking, what they were what was going through their heads because they had no clue what was going to happen and even the, the technology guys back then they had no clue what they were doing but I would love to go back and you know just say to them you guys are off on one hell of a big adventure there was that and if I could the only other location that I would go to to just you know talk to someone and be able to say thank you I would take the TARDIS back to 1983 and just give a thank you to the late Sally Ride, who was the first American woman to fly in space aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger. I would just say to her, thank you for <clears throat> thank you for being an inspiration. And um, I wish I could have met her in person and. Um, you know, so those are the two answers that I would give. Um, another question here is, which doctor had the best costume? I think for worst costume, um, that would have to go to six, Colin Baker. I don't know what the hell is going on with his costume, that like multicolored coat. Um, I have to say, hmm, I think Christopher Eccleston's. Uh, his ninth Doctor Ensemble with the leather jacket. Um, I thought that was really cool. I liked that. I liked, um, I like um, Matt Smith's um, recent costume changes, especially in, um, in, um, the, the Snowman, the Christmas one. I thought that was really cool, and um, I also liked the Eighth Doctor's look, uh, that like Victorian style look. I thought that was cool, and of course, Ten with his Converse shoes. Those were, those are just awesome. 
<clears throat> um, which character do you wish you could meet in real life and why? Um, oh my god, there are several. Um, of course I would like to meet River and, well, I kind of have met Captain Jack if you want, but, mm, that's kind of a fly-off answer. Um, uh, one of the characters that I would, that I think I would really like to meet in real life, uh, Sarah Jane Smith. I would love to meet her. Um, her character was always very well written, and um, of course Elizabeth Sladen. Uh, she was one heck of an actress. I love, um, you know, I love her in the classic episodes, and then I love that they brought her back for the school reunion episode with Tennant, and, um, you know, I have seen a few episodes of the Sarah Jane Adventures, and I thought they were done really well. And, um, you know, it's sad that she, um, you know, passed away, and I think she would, I think Elizabeth Lane would really be amazed by how much is being celebrated for the 50th, but I definitely would have liked to have met uh, Sarah Jane Smith. What are your hopes for 12? Um, I think 12 is going to bring a totally different um, vibe and um, definitely a whole mess of new adventures and storylines into um, what we know already. Um, I think Capaldi is perfect to, um, to take the reins for the next set of adventures and I'm really looking forward especially to how um, the dynamic is going to change with 12 and Clara <laughs> and I'm hoping that 12 does have an interaction with River because I think the two of them Capaldi and Alex Kingston would really um, hit it off and you know I think I think um, 12 is going to be really interesting and I think he's going to be um, a breath of fresh air What's the best piece of Doctor Who merchandise that you own? Don't own anything? What's something you wish you did? Um, of course I have the sonic screwdrivers. I have 11, 10, and reverse, which I showed you before. Um, I have to say... Hmm, I also have two lanyards. Uh, of course I have some of the books. Um... As far as specialness goes, I'd have to say my, I'd have to say the two that stand out for me because they have special meaning to me, well actually three, are River's Sonic Screwdriver, the Vortex Manipulator, and River's Diary. I use, um, I really do use the diary for my own personal, um, spoilers. And, um, plus, those are the items that I had with me from my very first Comic-Con and from meeting, uh, John Barrowman. So, those hold personal significance to me, so that's why those are my favorites. How do you think the Eleventh Doctor will regenerate? Now, this leads into what I want to talk about next. Um, I have no idea how Eleven is going to regenerate. All I know is, um, from the pictures that have been going around, there's these pictures going around of the TARDIS on a snowy landscape, and you see trees in the background, and you see the sun coming up in the clouds, and you see a trail of footprints in the snow leading to the TARDIS, and you see Eleven's sonic screwdriver, just sitting there in the snow, and you see blood spattered in the, in the snow. This is something we do not want to see. Just about me and, and several other fans, we're just flipping out that this image was released. And it says, um, all things end, and then on the bottom it says Christmas Day. Now, I... Honestly, have no clue how Eleven's going to regenerate, but from everything I've read, it's going to be a really emotional one. Although I don't know how a regeneration can get can top how much um, Ten's regeneration was, because Ten's was emotional. That last line, I don't want to go, and then we see him regenerate into Matt. Um, 
I don't know how he's going to regenerate, but um, it's definitely going to be emotional. Um, but, you know, that's how the show has, you know, managed to keep going. And, you know, that's the plot of the show, whether you like it or not. That, that's how it happens. Um, <clears throat> I'd have to say um, one of the worst regenerations was, um, for me... Go, it has to be from the 1996 movie. Um, I think Sylvester McCoy got the crappiest ending out of all the doctors. Um, well, for those who haven't seen it, um, in the 1996 movie, um, McCoy crashes the TARDIS into San Francisco during this gang fight, and he gets shot, and he is... and. Um, he is operated on by um, a surgeon who ends up being the companion for the movie. And of course, you know, how are they supposed to know that our favorite Time Lord, <coughs> excuse me, how are they supposed to know that our favorite Time Lord happens to have two hearts? So he is accidentally killed during open heart surgery. They wheel him into the morgue and it's in the morgue that McCoy regenerates into McGon. It's like, really? <laughs> okay. So, I don't know how, how Levin's going to regenerate, but we'll see. Now, <clears throat> I'm trying to think if I have anything else to cover, because I know I covered a lot. I love that the Fine Brothers on uh, YouTube, I love that they did, um, I love that they finally did a Teens React video to Teens React to Doctor Who, and I love seeing their reactions, the ones who really love it, the Whovians, I love seeing their reactions, like, you know, yes, <laughs> they're very, very excited, and, um, you know, they're excited, they have them, um, you know, they have them, you know, identify objects. Although, it cracks me up who was able to identify the, the sonic screwdriver and who wasn't. I thought that was really funny. Um, you know, and they all seemed, um, excited for, uh, Capaldi to take over and, um, you know, they just about said the same answers, at least the same answers as to who's their favorite doctor, Tennant or Smith, and most of them said Tennant. Um, for me, my favorite doctor would have to be um, the one that I um, have seen almost from like beginning, beginning to end to end, um, was Matt Smith. <clears throat> I am still yet to see all of David Tennant's episodes, but um, Matt Smith has got to be my absolute favorite, and um, second had to be David Tennant. This is my favorite coffee mug, as you can see, very, um, very space themed, very, um, I'd have to say it's kind of time weird I guess. So, I think I covered just about everything that I want to talk about today. Um, like I said, I'm, you know, I'm annoyed that I will be missing the 50th as it happens, but, you know, real world responsibilities clashing with my fandom, so, you know, I gotta pick one or the other. Now, <clears throat> I'm just excited that it's finally here. It's finally here. It's finally the 50th. It's like, first was the 50th of James Bond. It's like, okay, get that over with. And now, you know, it's our turn for Whovians to take over. Super excited. So, that's about all I have to cover. And, um, I don't know when I'm going to be able to make another video because... Um, my schedule is starting to get really packed with the uh, holidays coming up very soon, but um, I see something I want to record, I will, you know, 
definitely make a video about it. And, um, you know, so there's a lot coming up, and here's to the 50th.